my dear students in this video i will be discussing structures which is just enough to understand the concept of linked lists suppose we want to store the roll number name and percentage of 100 students here roll number is of the type integer name is array of characters or string and percentage is of the type float all the three roll number name and percentage belong to different data types if we use arrays to store these we need three different arrays one array to store the hundred roll numbers another array to store hundred names yet another array to store hundred percentages first array to store the roll numbers which is of the type integer second array to store hundred names array of strings or array of characters or string third array to store the percentages which is of the type float the roll number name and percentage of 100 students are stored in three different groups because when we are storing these in three different arrays it is almost like three different groups if each array is considered as a group now the question is can we store the roll number name and percentage of 100 students in a single group can we store all these 100 students roll number name and percentage as a single group yes we can but how using structures using structures we can store the roll number name and percentage of 100 students as a single group let us see how now how to define or declare a structure this is how we do it what is the name of the structure student how many members are there in the structure three members are there the first one is roll number which is of the type integer the second one is name which is array of characters or string 30 characters can be stored in the array and the third one is percent which is of the type float in the above the name of the structure is student in the above structure student there are three members named the roll number name and percent yes correct now this is very important we have just defined the shape of the structure type student no memory is allocated we have just defined the shape what is the name of the structure how many members are there what is the data type of each member that and all we have defined mean we have defined the shape of the structure no memory is allocated next how to declare a structure variable yes here you can just observe after defining the shape before ending it with a semicolon we write s1 meaning s1 is a structure variable of the type student or we can also define like this struct student s1 meaning s1 is a variable of the type structure of the type student so we can either declare a structure variable like this or like that now s1 is a structure variable yes let us consider the following structure same thing and here s1 is a structure variable let us consider a small chunk of memory 1 2 3 5 2 1 2 7 5 now let us consider the memory allocation for the structure variable s1 how memory is allocated for s1 see s1 is a structure variable the first member of the structure is roll number which is of the type integer since roll number is of the type integer two bytes should be allocated yes since roll number is an integer variable it requires two bytes two memory locations yes two bytes are allocated next name is a character array it requires 30 bytes meaning 30 memory locations yes 30 memory locations are allocated from 1 to 4 1 to 1 to 7 0 yes 30 bytes are allocated since percentage percent is a float variable it requires four bytes four memory locations yes four bytes four memory locations are allocated totally the structure student requires 36 bytes 36 memory locations meaning for row number 2 for name 30 for percent 4 2 plus 30 plus 4 is 36 36 yes 36 for a structure variable yes one 36 bytes are allocated you may just observe uh, as in the sequence of the members of the structure first memory is allocated for roll number next memory is allocated for name next memory is allocated for percent yes now consider the following structure see you may just observe here 
S1 is a structure variable whereas PS is a structure pointer because before PS there is a star PS is a structure pointer and PS will contain the address of the S1 meaning PS will contain the address of the structure variable S1 we have assigned that also now in the above S1 is a structure variable and PS is a structure pointer fine how to access the members of a structure very important two things two points members of a structure can be accessed by the structure variable using the dot operator so here what is the structure variable s1 if s1 wants to access the members of the structure roll number name and percent it has to use the dot operator that is s1 dot roll number s1 dot name s1 dot percent meaning Whenever a structure variable has to access the members of the structure, it has to use the dot operator. Now, the members of a structure can be accessed by the structure pointer using the arrow operator. Here, what is the structure pointer? PS. If PS wants to access the structure members, roll number, name and person, it has to use arrow operator. That is, PS arrow roll number, PS arrow name, PS arrow percent. Very important. If structure variable wants to access the members of the structure, it has to use dot operator. If structure pointer wants to access the members of the structure, it has to use arrow operator. Now, let us write a small program. Let us consider a small program. Main name of the structure is student. Yes, in roll number, name and percent. And here, struct student S1. S1 is a structure variable. And PS is a structure pointer. Yes. Let us assume the same chunk of memory from 1, 2, 3, 5 to 1, 2, 7, 5. 2 bytes should be allocated for roll number. Yes. 30 bytes for name. Yes. And 4 bytes for percent. Yes. So totally for S1, 36 bytes are allocated. Yes. This is the memory allocation for the variable S1. Next for PS, which is a structure pointer, how many memory locations should be allocated for PS? Any pointer, it is only 2 bytes, 2 memory locations. For PS also, 2 bytes, 2 memory location. Therefore, for PS, yes, 2 bytes and 2 memory locations. Yes, this is the memory allocated for PS. Next, PS is equal to ampersand S1, meaning PS, please contain the address of S1. What is address of S1? 1239. Therefore, PS will contain 1239. Simple. Next. Print of enter the student details. Yes, enter the student details is printed. Let us read. Let us scan f. Scan f s1 dot roll number. You can just observe s1 is a structure variable. Structure variable is accessing the member of the structure roll number. Therefore, dot operator s1 dot roll number. Let us read 298. So 298 should go to the memory allocated for roll number. Yes, 298 goes there. Next scan f s1 dot name. We shall read the name Sahana. So Sahana should go to the memory allocated for name. Yes, Sahana is stored in the memory allocated for name. Next, S1 dot percent. We should read the percentage 75.50. That should go to the memory allocated for percent. Yes. Next, the student details are. Yes, the student details are. See, now we are printing using the structure pointer. So, when structure pointer is accessing roll number, we have to use the arrow operator. So, what is PS arrow roll number? It is 298. So, 298 is printed. Next, PS arrow name. We are printing name using the structure pointer PS. So, what is PS arrow name? Yes, it is like this. PS arrow name is Sahana. So, Sahana is printed. Next, PS arrow percent. So, what is PS arrow percent? It is 75.50. So, 75.50 is displayed. That's all. Now, you can neatly observe in this program, during scanning, we scanned the members, values of the members using the structure variable. While printing the members, Values of the members, we use the structure pointer. Structure variable, we use dot operator. Structure pointer, we use the 
arrow operator very simple and also in this video i have covered the structures concept of structures which is just enough to understand the concept of linked list